and we continue. You've heard the selected reading, the morning evocation, and you've already dipped into the sacred silence. You're coming into the consciousness of being still, silent, inner spiritual solitude. We're inviting you in the way of meditation to allow this to become a way of living, a way of life. Oftentimes people will come to the presence or, be, or go into their meditation practice when there's an emergency in their life, when there's anxiety or anxiousness or stress to alleviate all of that. Those are beginning steps. Those are steps that neophytes take. But as a spiritual community that's based in meditation, affirmative prayer, life's visioning, sacred service, holy, holy fellowship, we're encouraging individuals to bring in the meditation practice as a way of living. In the same way that you would wake up and brush your teeth, take a shower, hydrate, do all the things necessary for you to move into your day, you want to do the most important thing. Breathe and make contact with the infinite, the infinite presence that's within you, <clears throat> not within your body, excuse me, <clears throat> your consciousness, your awareness. And without that, you're dangling on the strings of societal fantasies, parental fantasies, religious fantasies, global contagion fantasies. You're dangling on the string of thought forms that move through the milieu of our society. What a wasted incarnation. You have entered into this incarnation with all of the power, all of the presence, all of the love, all of the intelligence, and it is up to you to discover, uncover, activate, and express it. So you're more than merely human. You have a human incarnation that is a light bulb to reflect and to reveal the infinite. So as you begin to turn within, you begin to break free from the milieu of thought forms and opinions and points of view and positionalities, and you start to come to the center where there's no positionality because the center is everywhere. Now that's an insight that you have. When you're in limited perception, you have a positionality, you have an opinion, you have a point of view. But from the center, there's full spectrum awareness that begins to emerge there is no positionality because you're at the center. You begin to see life differently. And I don't mean with your eyes, I mean with consciousness. And then what begins to happen with that insight? There is a vibrational leaning into an awareness that all is well. I'm not talking about the world of appearances right now. Circumstances, situations, people, places, things, phenomena, condensed thought forms. I'm talking about that which is real. You start to lean into the awareness that all is well. And as you're leaning into that, you enter into flow motion, you enter into more of a flow of life. So anxiousness and anxiety being projected onto the future, what's gonna happen? Oh my God, I got a plan for this and that. You're in flow and your steps are ordered by the Lord as it states in scripture ordered by the sacred law of life. You're moved by intelligence and wisdom, transformational knowledge. You're moved differently. So there's an incremental releasing of limited points of view that don't square with your ever-increasing awareness of your oneness with the presence and then, even in the world of experiences, things just seem to go your way. It's not luck, L-U-C-K, it's living under cosmic knowledge. Things just 
have a trending towards working together for good. They trend towards joy and happiness. Because little by little by little, you are extracting the immature consciousness of your happiness and joy being dependent on someone else, some circumstance, some situation being a certain way. And little by little by little, your joy is emanating from the depth of your being. And it, and it moves you to grow through circumstances, situations, etc. So you're not dangling on the strings. You're not a puppet anymore. You're a living emanation of the presence. You're maturing spiritually. Now, you don't have a lot of examples about that. You definitely don't have, I can't think of any right now, of any political, fig political figures that hold that frequency or that vibration of powerful statesmanship, wisdom, kindness, compassion, generosity, love, 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 love. No. You don't see that a lot on the newsreel, maybe on holidays, things like that. It suddenly becomes like popular to talk about peace or love or generosity or forgiveness or kindness, you know, depending on uh, uh, the different religious holidays is an emphasis on those kind of qualities. But when those, quali when those holidays pass by, people go back to business as usual, kind of. They just kind of go into an unconscious blur of life and get caught right back up into the anxiousness, the anxiety, the getting, the being right, I'm right. But as individuals who are becoming initiated into a higher frequency of life, you develop a spiritual practice such as meditation that becomes your way of living, as I said, from the top of this Dharma talk. And then you move through life differently. No one may, able to, may be able to tell the difference that you're not in the world. You're, you're in it, but you're not of it. No one might be able to even notice. You're doing your particular duties, or whatever your particular place of employment is. You're a family individual. You have nephews and nieces and kids and friends. Nobody may not be able to spot that there's something different about you, that you're in the world doing what you're called to do according to your dharma, according to your uniqueness, but you're levitating. Vibrationally, you're a little bit above the anxiety, anxiousness, confusion, and worry. And then you, without you even knowing it at times, at Agape we say beneficial presence. You become a beneficial presence, meaning you become a vibrational tuning fork that wherever you go, and sometimes even places you don't go physically, the highest vibration wins and things begin to vibrate at the level of, what, of the octave that you're tuned into. You make a vibrational difference. You change the world. You change the frequency. As you keep coming back to a pure sense of coherence around your fundamental unity with the presence of God. Remember, not a guy in the sky. But as Yeshua ben Joseph, otherwise known as Jesus the Christ, said, we must worship God in spirit and in truth. And as John said, God is love. So more and more and more, we walk in that frequency. And then since guilt and shame and blame are not a part of our spiritual practice, when you fall prey to the world, of circumstances, you get back up, you do not beat yourself up, you don't say you're a bad person because you had a bad day, you just get back up and begin again, over and over and over again. And then you discover, as you look back and read your journal, or look back to a degree, 
that you have developed and are developing a new norm, a new higher frequency than you used to hold a year ago, two years ago, five years ago, whatever the case may be. You actually see the arc of your expanded awareness like a thief in the night. It shows up and you, re and you realize later that you've changed and the ramifications of that change are showing up in your life. You remember this. You are entering into your spiritual practice to change, to transform, to not be the same individual you are today six months from now, six years from now, whatever the case may be. You're, you're coming to change. And I don't mean just going through changes. I mean transformation, going beyond the present formation of your emotional body, mental body, etc. This practice is sublime. Continuing the consciousness that was established earlier as you moved into the stillness and the silence. Jump right here into the silence. Hands on the lap, perhaps facing upward, thumb and forefinger touching. Deep breath of receptivity. You have attention. Your attention is on the vibrational intention to wake up to your glorious nature. Your attention is embracing the body temple breathing. It's the sacred breath. It's happening presently. The inhalation, the exhalation is present. Lowly listening is activated, that is, with your entire being. You're available to catch the eternal broadcast of the spirit with your entire being, that which created the ears and the eyes. And always, this is the very first time you've ever practiced meditation. Whether you are a newbie or a veteran, this moment is new. This is our first time. Let's be still. Still, silent, solitude.
be still and know that I am God in the midst of you. Be mindful of your attention. Another moment, stillness, silence.
transition from this elevated state of consciousness. We give ourselves permission to be lifted into an ever increasing awareness of so much to be grateful for, so much to be thankful for. We allow for the mystic cord of memory to be so activated that we continue to count our blessings, more blessings than things to complain about. The presence of God is always being itself totally and completely at every point of its creation and beyond. So we are flooded with the tsunami of love and harmony and peace and joy and wisdom. We enter into this state of gratitude consciously and allow for this state of gratitude and thanksgiving and dynamic appreciation to clean our perceptual windows, our windows of perception that we may see clearly, that we may recognize, we may recognize the presence that is never an absence. Oh, God is everywhere. And in this dynamic recognition, every breath is a reminder of our intrinsic unity with this presence. We're one with God. We're one with love and beauty and life. And from this consciousness of oneness, the vibrational word that emerges is a whole and complete spiritual idea fraught with intelligence and vibratory frequency and energy, I speak the word for each and every one of us that divine freedom is the order of the day. Spiritual liberation reigns supreme. Mental clarity, emotional purity, physical wholeness, the body of our affairs reflecting and revealing the cosmos in a way that is beyond our wildest imaginings. And the word is serving as a law of elimination to anything that would hinder, delay, obstruct, or deny the fullness of life from moving through us. Oh, all of those errant thought forms of separation are redeemed. The great redemption is happening, a transmutation of that energy into a higher frequency because energy is never created or never destroyed. It's transmuted now to this redemptive process of affirmative prayer and sacred meditation. Something wonderful is happening. And we accept this. Behold... I make all things new emerges from the depth of our being and we reclaim all of the errant parts of ourselves that is split off and say, ha, come home. All things are made new right now. And now we go into a state of giving. What do we give? We give thanks. That that which is being prayed for is already answered. It was given before we ask. Our prayer is receiving that which is eternally being given. And so we accept this, and more than words can say or convey, and we allow it to be so. Thus, we can say, and so it is, even now. Amen. Amen. And our shame. As we slowly open our eyes, we allow ourselves to just bask in the awareness of our oneness with the presence of God, and then we put this heightened awareness into practice right this moment, and that is through our sacred practice of the conscious use and participation in the law of circulation. That as we come into coherence around being a generative being, we become generous right now. We love to give, we love to share, we love to volunteer, we love to be of service to each other. So in this moment, 
We give thanks that we have something to give. We just stop and we just have, we just give, we give thanks that we have something to give. Whatever it is, we have something to give to circulate to our spiritual community known as agape, that it may continue to stand strong as a bright light of freedom. I'm talking about real freedom, not political freedom, but real intrinsic spiritual freedom to be our real self and our real being. We own ourselves. God owns us. And so it is. Amen. So this is your opportunity to share. And for the veterans who have been giving, thank you so much. You know how to do it. Don't let us stop you. You know exactly how to do it. Whether you're writing out a check, or whether you're doing cash, whatever you're doing, you know how to do it. Right now, if you want to use your phone, you can take your phone out and you can shine your camera at the QR code right here on the screen. The QR code will come up later so you can take a picture of it and use it during the week when circulation comes in. You shine your light on that QR code and it will take you into the portal of Agape. You choose the amount you want to give and the regularity of your giving. So this says you want your meditation practice to be consistent, you want your giving to be consistent, you want your service to be consistent so you can be in the flow of life. You can do that right now. If you're a textaholic, you only want to text when you're not driving, and you may want to text now. You can text the word GIVE to 424-321-6243. It'll take you into that same ever-expanding portal of Agape. It'll show you the ways to give. Excuse me, it'll show you, it'll show, you know, it will show you different ways of giving as well. Uh, it'll show you all the manner of, um, you know, stocks and bonds and properties and things like that that people are beginning to... Uh, leave us in their will, and we absolutely appreciate that. That will take you right into that portal. Choose the amount you want to give today in your texting, and the regularity of your giving. If you put the word cover after it, it means you'll cover the expense of that technology, which is a couple of dollars. If you like to mail in your tithe, your gift, your offering, your donation, your, gen your, your generosity flow, checks and money orders are made out to Agape International. You make it out, you, you send it to 8549 Wilshire Boulevard, Suite 1156, Beverly Hills, California, 90211. You can send that in right now. If you would like to uh, go direct, if you're on our YouTube page right now, you can go directly to our website if you so desire, agapelive.com. Make your donation there. If you're on our Facebook page, is a way to donate on the Facebook page. We're making it so easy for you. If, you, if you're one of the six people in the sanctuary, if you want to write a check or make or give cash, the ushers will receive it as you exit the sanctuary. Reverend Judah Moret is going to come up at this moment and highlight some of the things going on at Agape. Don't let this keep you from your giving. Thanks, Rev. Good morning. You can visit agapelive.com for more information about any of the items mentioned and to find out about all of our weekly offerings. All times listed are Pacific Standard Time. Agape University's new class, Prayer to the Soul of Prayer, ignites the power of connection with the infinite and activates the heart and soul of your prayer as a pathway to greater intimacy with the divine. Our six powerhouse instructors are Reverend Julie Moret, c'est moi, that's me. Reverend Deborah Johnson, Reverend Jode Stedman, Reverend Coco Stewart, Agape Licensed Spiritual Practitioner Aisha Mason, and Reverend Arlene Hilton, bringing their fiery passion for prayer to the teaching each week. Reverend Michaels says prayer is the foundation of spiritual practice. It is the direct channel extending from you to the heart, mind of spirit. The the presence of the living God. So you can empower your channel of communication to the divine. This six-week class begins Tuesday, June 6th at 6 p.m. Register today at agapelive.com. I'm teaching on the 6th, and I look forward to seeing you there. Save the date. Our gift, uh, this is a free gift to you, a master class, The Soul of Prayer. It's Friday, June 2nd at 5 p.m. Registration information will be coming shortly. This week on Reverend Michael's podcast, Take Back Your Mind, catch his conversation with the energy codes 
with international speaker, master of bioenergetic theory, author and founder and visionary of the Mortar Institute for Bioenergetics, Dr. Sue Mortar. Reverend Michael will also answer the life question of the week and guide you in meditation. You can watch or listen to the Take Back Your Mind podcast on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. And remember, subscribe or follow to receive alerts when new shows drop each Wednesday. If you're seeking spiritual insight into your finances, health, life purpose, or world events, email Reverend Michael at podcast at michaelbeckwith.com. Your question may be featured as the life question of the week on the Take Back Your Mind podcast with Michael B. Beckwith. Remember, share your first name and location. Agape is open to the public every Sunday, 11 a.m. for meditation, 11.30 worship service. When you come, be aware we've got a little construction happening on Wilshire Boulevard and around the building, so give yourself a few extra minutes to get comfortable parking. And we just love seeing you here, so come on up to Agape. Remember, all services will continue to be live streamed. Today at 2 p.m., the Agape Wise Ones invite our 50-plus community to celebrate via Zoom, celebrate with our savvy elders to share a deeper spiritual love while connecting as divine radiance. Go to agapelive.com, click on the Agape Wise One banner to register. Odyssey, Agape's Young Adults Ministry for those ages 20 to 35, invites you to join them Friday, May 26th, 7 p.m. Click on the banner on our website to join. Email revarlene at agapelive.com with any questions. Spiritual community grants you immunity from the lower vibrations of life. Participate in our morning prayer community at 8 a.m. and our meditation practice community at 12 noon. All you have to do is go to Agape's Facebook page and just feel the great difference it makes in your day. If it's important enough to be concerned about, it is important enough to pray about. Remember, Agape's prayer ministry is here for you. Our spiritual practitioners are here for you in your moments of need 24-7 for your immediate prayerful connection. Call the Agape prayer ministry at 310-348-1270 or you can email us for a written prayer at prayeratagapelive.com. If nobody answers, just leave a message. A practitioner will get back with you. And many of you have been asking, when is Reverend Michael going to do something live where we can come, a live intensive? You can register right now for his new two-day live in-person event, Your Destiny Awaits You. It's June 10th and 11th at the Gaia Sphere in Boulder, Colorado. Reverend Michael developed this intensive to not only help you identify the next great version and vision of your life, but to help you embody and manifest it. For a limited time, you can use the code BECKWITH at 30% off. For more information and to register, click the banner on our Agape Live website. Many blessings to you. Thank you, Reverend Julie. Let's turn within for a moment and let us give thanks. The floodgates of our heart are open and that there is a tremendous genera gen generative energy happening, and that we're living in the all-needs-met consciousness where the Agape International Spiritual Community is concerned in all of its ministries, programs, evolutionary collaboration, staff, all the equipment necessary, everything that is necessary for this community to continue to shine. The prosperity is flowing, and now we bless the gift, the giver, and we give thanks. We give thanks, we give thanks, and allow it to be so. And so it is, amen. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your generosity. Thank you for making a big difference uh, in our community. Wherever you are on the globe, you may stand up at this particular moment as we <clears throat> hear Charles Holt singing, I Forgive Me, a song written by myself and Tim McAfee Lewis, with the full awareness that we are we're letting go of the shame and the blame that brings us pain. Now is the time for me to let go of the shame. It's time to let go of shame. The past behind We're allowing our past to be dissolved. I see a new We're seeing newness. I'm ready for my change. We're ready for a great change, a great transformation, a great I'm participation in our own unfolding. Becoming more, never less than our true self. Listen to Charles. I forgive me. I forgive me. I forgive All forgiveness is self-forgiveness. Whether we're forgiving someone else 
We're always releasing the rancor, the resentment, the animosity that may be lodged within our own heart. So we're surrendering it all to the presence right now. We're ready for our change. So we stand in a great awareness and a great readiness, a great preparedness for the blessings that are being poured forth eternally right here and right now. We're saying yes to being more of ourselves. And we're giving thanks that that which is eternally being given is now being received by us, being accepted. For God is the great giver. We must be gracious enough to receive. And we do that now with thanksgiving, gratitude, openness, availability, and pure surrender. And so it is. Amen. Have a bright and beautiful day, everyone. Remember, we will see you at 8.30 meditation, 9 o'clock service, live streamed on all these different platforms. And of course, as Reverend Julie reminded you, Agape is open now. 11 a.m. meditation service. 11.30 worship celebration fellowship service. We'll see you then.